Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the BMW X1 facelift and straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay which is the easiest in a BMW because yeah, you don't have to, you know, actually change any lever or anything of that sort. Oh my god, this looks so mini. Anyways, this is the engine of the car and you see the design of the engine bay is a little different here. Of course, you can hear a lot of the engine because it's a diesel and there is insulation right there. Okay, let's close this and you see it's very difficult for you to actually identify what has changed. Yes, the grille has become bigger to get it in line with bigger BMW SUVs. And yeah, it does have the presence. However, it is on the smaller size. The overall car is on the smaller side actually and that can be seen. Now, they have given it silver paint and not chrome treatment. But the grille is a bit too large. Still much better than the one which you have seen on the 4 Series and the M3 and the M4. Okay, the lights also get a revision. These are all LED lights. You can see the DRL which looks really very nice. And these air curtains are very much functional, yeah, functional air curtains. The fog lights have been revised as well, now they are horizontal. And of course, the bumper also sees some revision, okay, that is the towing hook of the car at the front. The X1 does look fresher now, but still not the most attractive car somehow, because, yeah. Anyways, this is the indicator of the car, I don't know why it's fogged up on the inside, but that is the indicator at the front. Coming to the side, you realize that the X1 is actually a small car, and what really robs away the aesthetic appeal are these smaller tyres. Yeah, the tyres are a bit on the smaller size. Okay, smaller side. What am I saying? I always get mixed up between those things. So, these are run flat tyres. And the tyre size happens to be 255, 55, 17s. Come on, the alloy wheel design could have been a little bit more adventurous. But you have this cladding running throughout the car. And the silver finish below as well. Meanwhile, here, okay, there is uh, something which projects at the night. At least, can you see that? Yep. Indicators on the mirrors as well. And this blue shade looks quite nice on this car. Obviously, you get a rear disc, but the design is kind of aged somehow. At the rear, again, changes are very minimal. What you get is, of course, revised tail lights, revised bumper, and these tailpipes, which are bigger in terms of size. They are very much functional. You've got two of these. I'll uh, just see it from the down. Yeah, that is the exhaust and the underbody of this car. You get rear parking sensors. There is a reverse parking camera of the car. Says X1 right there. Lights look really nice and uh, they're typical BMW lights in terms of design. That's the indicator of the car. You get a rear spoiler, rear washer wiper as well. Straight away, let's open the boot. All right. It says S Drive 20D, which is a variant name. The boot is actually quite big. Yeah, it's decently big. But you know what? The good thing is the spare wheel is right below. It's a space saver. It happens to be 135.90.17. And yeah, that is the spare wheel of the car along with the toolkit. That's actually nice. The storage space here. Yeah, deep enough compartment. Same is the case here as well. Deep enough compartment. Meanwhile, there is a 12 volt charging socket and a light placement here. Hook right there. Hook on both the sides. That's quite a practical boot. Okay, the warning triangle is there at the top. So, you see, it's actually a very practical car. And honestly, why is it practical? Because it's got good amount of space on the inside as well. And that's something we'll find out by getting inside. Okay, that is generous amount of space on offer. Door pockets are also large enough. You get rear AC vents and because of the massive panoramic roof, it gives you the airy feeling in spite of having a black cabin. Alright, you can recline the seat into 60-40 format here. That is so easy to recline it to increase the boot carrying capacity as well. But you know what? This is the upright seating. That is a reclined one. You push it further and you can recline it further as well to improve your comfort at the rear. Okay, three adjustable headrests, but three people can't really sit comfortably because there's a sort of a hump here. Two USB-C charging ports right there, but there's good amount of knee room on offer, good amount of leg room. Scooped out seat back, magazine holders, but you know, the seat is a bit on the stiffer side. However, quite comfortable nonetheless. In fact, under thigh support is also quite decent. So is the headroom, like there is good amount of headroom on offer too. In spite of the massive panoramic roof, you get a hook, handle and light placement on the top. Same is the case on the other side as well and BMW has been optimistic enough to give you a proper seat belt for the middle passenger right there. You wouldn't expect that considering you are like, yeah, three people can't really sit comfortably, but you get that too. That's also really very nice and you get a center armrest, which is a little difficult to pull out with cup holders as well. So yeah, it's actually a very practical cabin. Okay, that is the dashboard of this car. Again, kind of seems to be on the older side now. Yeah, obviously BMW has moved up in terms of newer designs for the interiors. But, well, that's a story for another day. Yeah, certain features are missing. That's kind of surprising for a 50 lakh car. Like, there is no keyless entry. That's very surprising. I expected that at least. Straight away, let's get inside. First and foremost, door pockets are large enough here at the front as well. Power window controls. These are the controls for the outside rear view mirrors. 
lock and unlock the door the driver seat gets two memory settings and obviously electric adjust the co-driver seat also gets electric adjust and these are the controls for the lights okay front fog rear fog and this is obviously for the headlight activation this is to increase or decrease well this is the headlight leveler i believe or not well either it could be that or it could be the intensity of the instrument cluster i always get confused between both these things automatic headlights automatic wipers and yeah it's making this noise right not ting 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 no not the britannia one okay obd port is right there and that is to open the engine bay you see there's good amount of space below too because there's a proper dead pedal and the secret smoking compartment as well which is here hidden like not everybody can spot it steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake obviously at this price you would expect the same steering wheel actually looks nice what doesn't look nice is the fact that the car's material quality could have been better yes it looks nice and decent however i mean this is a little bit soft but certain places they are hard plastics you get this fake wood treatment in the center as well and this looks a bit busy okay we have the indicators on okay this looks a bit busy here now these are obviously for the audio control the buttons this is for the air conditioning of the car and there are twin cup holders along with an ashtray which is a removable unit this is the ashtray just in case smoking is your kind of thing and that's why we've got a cigarette lighter here as well okay so two usb c ports at the rear okay why is this not slotting in place and one usb port at the front so there is a usb port here and it has obviously charging a phone every time all day throughout don't uh, yeah okay anyways here we go so you see there's good amount of storage space below the front center armrest and under the front center armrest also there is storage space there's an electric parking brake which is mm, not impressive because it should have a proper handbrake anyways it's now front wheel drive who cares three dummy buttons here these are the buttons to actually decide the driving modes sport eco pro and normal traction control button keep it pressed traction control completely deactivates a new gear lever which also looks nice and good to hold obviously the i drive controller with a lot of buttons which we have seen earlier as well see this white stitching actually looks quite nice the glove box is mm, decent size all right yeah it is actually big enough but there is no cooling function here however there's a light inside and um, this screen actually is quite small in terms of appearance but it is actually big enough at 8.8 inch obviously auto dimming inside your view mirror there is a mirror here along with a light same as the case on the driver side as well mirror along with a light meanwhile there is the mic placement and even the driver side has a handle to hold on to that's kind of cool lot of buttons here so of course these are the controls for the lights this is for the sunroof and uh, this i drive controller rather this i drive controller for this screen which happens to be a touch screen is very slick and nice as well in fact let's get into reverse right away you see this is the reverse parking camera it gets uh, guidelines which are missing somehow okay these are different type of guidelines you see these bars this is really very slick because whenever you're reversing now it does this dance and all like a snake telling you exactly how you're reversing and if something is in your line of sight that's also pretty cool now of course there is a lot to talk about in the infotainment system as well it's very slick it's very fast and it's very fluid too now what really matters to me is technology in action because there are these sport displays which look absolutely cool okay it shows you how much power and torque you're using in real time meanwhile when you come back you also realize that in efficient dynamics there is some cool stuff to look at like all right you can see it right now it gives you all that information as well but honestly yeah you know what it is old okay it's an updated version of bmw's i drive however the recent bmw cars like the 3 series and of course the z4 or z4 whatever you know call it or super as well they get an updated i drive which is obviously cooler you know why it's cooler because it's more slick and easier to use and obviously it gets voice commands too which is missing in this car now in terms of ambient lighting it gets only six colors yeah six color ambient lighting well that's kind of disappointing because mercedes benz is offering 64 colors for the ambient lighting that's absolutely right okay we've got navigation as well and uh, yeah and the maps look really nice rather the map looks really very nice yeah very fluid slick system i like it but a bit too small somehow at least it appears small because of its position center console is obviously tilted towards the driver this is the engine start stop button this is for the auto start function and this is for the indicators and this bc button is to browse through the multi information display which we'll see in a bit obviously it gets cruise control which has all the buttons here and these are buttons for the audio system this is for the voice commands which doesn't really work the way it should work because in your bmw cars it's more intuitive you get paddle shifters too let's use the wipers right away plenty of spray on offer the wipers work brilliantly well on this car all right let's use the rear wipers as well that is the rear wiper you can see that good amount of spray on the rear wiper too yeah that's actually a good thing meanwhile the infotainment system is nice but the instrument cluster is a bit dated however i like this than the recent bmw ones because they so remind you of the verna now of course you get analog speedometer tachometer and the fuel gauge 
Meanwhile, efficient dynamic meter is here below, which is actually a digital unit, and this all is digital. Yeah, this all is digital, so it gives you plenty of information, including telltale lights, the clock, and a lot of information which you can browse through by pressing this BC button. Somebody please tell me what is the full form of BC, because honestly, I do not know. All right, it's saying infinity one upon 100 kilometers. I don't even understand what that is. Plenty of information on offer. It's telling you the date as well, engine temperature, blah, blah, blah. In fact, if I open the door, yeah, it shows you that as well. Okay, it says side lights on turning off the side lights is showing you which door is exactly open and when you're driving the car it also shows you that you know what you need to lift and coast when you're driving in GoPro mode car's quality is good could have been better because of the hard plastics and it kind of feels dated now because there are plenty of features in newer BMW cars which is not there in this car actually let's open the sunroof of the car it is massive in terms of size just look at this sunroof brings in a lot of airy feeling as well okay this is just going to open the sun blind we press it once again and there the roof of the car opens too okay it's making some amount of noise i think something is stuck there we press it once again and that is how big it opens it actually is big enough you can climb out and jump if you so wish that is the size anyways let's play an audio right away Audio quality is actually quite nice and impressive. However, obviously, I expect better. What I notice is that there's this dummy lock and unlock button, which they seem to have removed from this car, and it gets Apple CarPlay, but it doesn't get Android Auto connectivity. I don't even know why that is the case. Okay, this is the button to unlock or rather open the boot of the car, unlock the car, and this is to lock the car as well. We'll do one thing. When I show you this trick in every VW car, I think we should also show it in a BMW, which is basically I'm going to lock the car and I'm going to keep this button pressed. When I keep this button pressed, yeah, I need to keep it pressed for a few seconds. And there the windows roll down as well. Obviously, one touch up and down power windows. The sunroof also opens completely. That is super cool. All done with a touch of a button on the remote. Okay, we're just going to put, I mean, close everything again. That shark fin antenna looks super cool as well. The, everything is shutting come on sunroof also closes yeah that is nice right that is of course very convenient in case you just forget to open or close the windows or the sunroof of the car yeah that's about it i think it's high time we start driving this bmw x1 which is the most affordable bmw suv in the market right now it says bmw led that's also cool the logo is the reason why you would want to buy this car which i will tell you once we start driving All right, we're all set to go, which means getting into drive mode, getting into sport mode. Here we are into sport mode. You can see the car comes there. Traction control, dynamic traction control, turn off completely. Let's get into sport display is right there. Air conditioning is off as well. Air conditioning is off. Slot the gear lever into sport mode. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor. Listen to this, huh? Have you heard so much wheel spin in your life? Probably not, but that just tells you how punchy this engine is. Of course, the engine is the same as before. It's a two liter diesel engine. Okay, it also comes with a petrol engine, but we are going to be talking about the diesel today because I love diesels and petrol suck, I believe, unless and until they have eight cylinders. So yes, what we've got is a four cylinder diesel engine, which produces the identical 190 horsepower, 4,000 RPM. Meanwhile, the torque output is the identical 400 Newton meters which comes in between 1750 to 2500 rpm which is the same as before so what has changed now it complies with bs6 emission norms thanks to the fact that it gets a dpf which is a diesel particulate filter and an scr which is selective catalytic reduction which means that when you are filling fuel you will notice that there's an add blue tank there as well to comply with bs6 emission norms the result is although the output is the same as before things have actually changed because the car has become more linear now why has it become more linear because when you accelerate real hard now then you emit a lot more from the exhaust which should not happen because it needs to comply with basic emission norms so that has changed here on the x1 but it's become faster than before why is it become faster than before because four wheel drive is tata bye bye yeah x drive is gone it's only front wheel drive which means it's kind of reduced its weight now it weighs around 600 kgs x drive will add another 150 kgs to the car so this is a front wheel drive which means it's a pseudo suv because front wheel drive cannot be an suv it is well forget everything now the definition of suv is also changed because micro suvs is something also which is there like neha's favorite 
the Maruti Urus. So let's straight away talk about the acceleration numbers, which have actually become faster. It goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.7 seconds, which is almost half a second quicker than before because of front wheel drive. Actually, lighter weight. All wheel drive obviously has better traction because power is going to all the what am I saying? Power is going to all four wheels, so obviously it has better traction. But you see, when you launch it aggressively with the traction control off, it does a lot of wheel spin. The wheel spin is absolutely crazy, and then it talks to us as well because power is being channeled to the front wheels. And uh, you know what? They have used the mini platform known as the UKL platform. The first generation of the X1 was rear wheel drive. Now this is front wheel drive. No X drive available. That's kind of awkward. That's kind of weird. The engine has punch, but doesn't have the you know kick in the pants feel which was there earlier. So that thing is also gone. Unfortunately, earlier BMW diesel engine, especially the two-liter diesel, also had a great, nice mid-range punch. Now it's completely linear. So it's got decent drivability. Mid-range is nice and strong, and it also screams to the top end because obviously it's a BMW engine. Now there are three drive modes on offer. There is Eco Pro, which conserves fuel. In fact, when you're driving an Eco Pro, and when you let, um, I mean, when you're driving Eco Pro, it actually shows you to lift off the accelerator pedal at a time just to conserve fuel. That's also there in Eco Pro mode. Meanwhile, normal mode is the regular mode, but you get full output in sport mode, and there is a sport mode for the gearbox as well. So what does these? I mean, what does the mode actually change? The modes obviously change the engine, the gearbox, the air conditioning, and I think probably the steering feel as well. But we'll talk about the steering in a bit. Let me tell you that performance is more than ample. There's good amount of grip on offer as well, and the grunt from the motor is really very exciting as well because it really pulls strongly, and the car is also very efficient. It has a tank of 51 liters. It will return a mileage of almost 15 kilometers per liter. In fact, with a full tank, you can go almost 1,000 kilometers on. Yeah, in the BMW X1, which means that you can go from here to Hyderabad on one tank of fuel. Okay, forget Hyderabad, probably you can go to Bangalore because Bangalore is further Hyderabad, like 700 kilometers. Bangalore is around 1000 kilometers. So, yeah, that difference is also there. Now, the X1 has been the entry level child of BMW's lineup, but kind of has lost its charm now because when they launched the first generation of the X1, it was so stiff, it was so stiff, and the steering was so heavy that it was like you know, a workout while operating the steering wheel. That is gone, the steering is now light. It's kind of weird, the steering wheel, because I don't find it so direct. And I'm shocked to say, this is a BMW, which doesn't feel like a BMW. The X1 doesn't feel like a BMW anymore. It feels more Audi in that sense. So while Audi is trying to become BMW, BMW is trying to become Audi. What is this weird now? Because now Audi is making sportier cars. Meanwhile, BMW is making cars which are more comfort oriented that's the reason why they actually changed the tagline the earlier tagline was the ultimate driving machine now it's become joyous bmw to appeal to a larger audience and that's somewhere i think bmw is losing the plot because bmws are all about driving pleasure this car doesn't inspire the confidence for me to push hard and fast okay body roll is well contained i do not deny that fact but the steering just doesn't connect well i mean i have to counter correct the steering every time i'm trying to take a corner it just doesn't feel direct enough it doesn't have the weight at higher speeds which you would expect okay if you drive it comfortably it's more than enough but if you want to push it hard it's lacking yeah. I'm disappointed in that fact plus power is being channeled to the front wheels only which means that mm, yeah that little bit of oversteer which BMW cars are known for that's not there here at all so when you see a nice pair of curves you are like mm, I wish this was a 3 series and that is going to be the conclusion of my vlog. If you're looking to buy an entry-level BMW, just get the 3 Series. The 3 Series is so much better. It's more modern. It has better interiors. It has more features. It has got rear-wheel drive too. So that's a pure BMW in the real sense. This is a Mini with a BMW badge. And not a Mini in the sense the way it drives, which is kind of unfortunate because you always expect a BMW to give you that exciting feel. This car does not. It feels soft. It feels like there's a confusion in the positioning of the car so when the first generation x1 was launched i was telling you it was super duper stiff and it the steering was really heavy they came up with the lci which is light cycle impulse which is facelift in bmw speak they dealt the steering they made it lighter they made the ride softer and that actually worked well because then people were like oh my god wow now i can drive an x1 my wife can drive one and i can drive it in the city too well nobody really cares you don't buy a bmw x1 just so that you can drive it in the city you want that feel if you want a nice badge to make a presence and tell your neighbors you know what i've arrived in like get a mercedes benz trust me nothing makes an impression as much as a mercedes benz cla gla mla whatever there's no mla but i'm just saying anyways <laughs> now just imagine you're driving a bmw with traction control completely off and you're not scared to even go full throttle because nothing is going to happen unfortunately nothing's going to happen you can obviously take control of the gears using the steering mounted paddles as well and obviously you've got a triptronic function as well you see, the engine is actually very refined. It's become more refined than before. The engine has become really very smooth. All thanks to the BS6 update, which also kind of blunts the excitement which you used to get in the mid-range. So you win some, you lose some. But most people will actually appreciate the refinement from this engine, which is like 
can be felt at any given moment. The gearbox is quick to shift. It's an eight-speed unit, and obviously, it's fast enough. It's a torque converter. You see, anytime you want to shift, it's actually fast enough. So yeah. It doesn't feel jerky as such and red line comes in at 5000 rpm which i'll show you right now so we are in what first or second maybe probably in second gear and there it actually holds on to a gear it will not upshift it's going 5500 rpm so yes bmw's engines still have that charm without a doubt but the steering doesn't have the charm anymore i don't i mean i could not imagine a day would come when i would be like you know what bmw steering wheels are not up to the mark but that time has come times are changing just go and buy that m5 right now before they also blunt the m5 filter revving the motor and off we go All right, it will take time for them to blunt the M5, but they have blunted the X1. I was telling you with the facelift, they softened it. With the new generation, the second generation, they softened things more, and now it feels even more softer because the suspension has been softened further. You see, the ambient light looks really very cool. That's really nice. In fact, before we get out of this tunnel, can I actually get inside uh, the lights, ambient lighting, and change the color of the light? Probably I can. Here we go into green. Green looks really rad. I love the green color on BMW cars, especially in the 7 series. It looks really very cool as well. Now, let us get back into what we were looking at earlier, which is technology in action. And technology in action, the sport displays look really very cool. So, here we go. Acceleration is really brisk. 7.7 .7 seconds to 100 kilometers per hour is really very fast. And I love the fact that they give you complete manual control of things. So, it will not upshift unless and until you do so. There, it's showing me the same thing here. Holding on to a red line, that's stupendous. I love how BMW engines rev. I mean, no diesel engine revs like BMW diesel engine, which is 5,500 RPM. So, a great engine. I was telling you, they've softened things even further. So, the suspension is more compliant now. Although, there is that stiffness, which is always there in a BMW car. So, that stiffness means that it's going to third through on really sharp potholes. But for the most part, it's very comfortable. It's easy to drive, easy to park. And it's a compact car at the end of the day, which means that the X1 is a very practical car. But somehow, that practicality has robbed the charm of what a BMW is known for which is driving feel. The driving feel is just missing and I'm so disappointed about that. Now, when you come around the corner, you have to counter correct the steering wheel. I cannot believe like why have they blunted the steering wheel so much? Every car maker is doing it. Every car maker, Ford, Maruti, okay, Maruti steering wheels were really very nice earlier, Swift and all that stuff. But now Maruti steering wheels are like, what is happening? The CIS steering has no feel or feedback. And although there is feel or feedback, it just doesn't feel direct enough. Somehow it's like, mm, why is it blunted? Mm, no idea. Check this out. That is the amount of wheel spin on offer. You can steer wherever you like. The car will just talk steer like mad. So I'll tell you what, the engine is the real highlight here. First and foremost, if you're looking to buy an X1, don't get a 3 Series. If you're still looking to buy an X1, well, get a 3 Series. If you're still looking to buy an X1, get the diesel, of course. Or probably wait for the next generation model, which will come in a couple of years time. I hope they bring back the Soul, which was then the first generation model. This one has just become so comfort oriented, lost the charm of what a BMW should be. Now, of course, there are four variants on offer, two for the petrol, two for the diesel. Then there are three trim levels. There's the Sport X, there's the X line, and there's the M Sport as well. But there's no four wheel drive. There's no X drive, even though BMW India's press release, which they shared with me while sharing the car with me, mentioned x drive heads up display and all that jazz but it mentioned bmw india on the release but all those features are not there so they actually forgot to change all that information that's kind of weird and awkward it i mean it does maintain its balance quite well but the steering does not communicate as well so the price range actually starts at 43.07 lakhs for the base model which happens to be the petrol sport x and the top of the line m sport happens to be priced at around 52 lakhs 18,000, somewhere around that now obviously all the prices are on road mumbai so yeah, it's an expensive car. You should get a 3 Series instead because it's got rear-wheel drive. Trust me, rear-wheel drive is the USP of BMW cars. I know I've been complaining that Audi is selling front-wheel drive cars. BMW is doing the same thing. Who knows, next generation of the 3 Series will be all-wheel drive. Probably it would be. And you know what? The future does not seem that bright, at least as far as the looks of BMW cars go. Because the grille is becoming so much bigger and I don't like, and I absolutely do not like the grille on the 4 Series and the M3 and the M4. I hope it looks better in person. But I honestly don't know what direction BMW is taking. BMW, you were doing just fine. There was absolutely no need to, you know, spoil a tried and tested formula of the ultimate driving machine. But now they were like, you know what, enough of ultimate driving machine. Let's appeal to a larger audience. And in that quest to appeal to a larger audience, BMW is losing its own brand identity of aggression, of a car which has a jarring ride, a car which has a steering so stiff that your muscles are sore after a long drive. And that's what I expect from a BMW. A car should be so stiff like a Beamer. I know on the same roads I was driving a 330i almost 10 years back and I still can remember that drive 
but today i cannot remember any bmw drive off late other than of course the m5 competition okay that i am remembering for all the wrong reasons though <laughs> now since we are entering the tunnel it is apt time to show you even more ambient light colors which means we get into vehicle settings and into lights now interior lighting tell me which color do you like the most so there's green there is white i don't know where water is falling from and uh, white you can't much see okay you can't see much actually orange only six colors that's like very limited when mercedes benz is now doing like 64 colors even the mg lobster sorry mg gloster is having 64 color ambient lighting i do not understand why the number of ambient light colors in a bmw are so less okay let's stop here brake performance is really very nice i love the brakes on bmw cars because obviously very sure footed in terms of stopping power now before we end listen to this that is some wheel spin absolutely crazy wheel spin in fact it takes a shift to almost fourth gear yeah it takes a shift no it will reach 100 km per hour in third gear itself around the corner you love the fact that it's a bmw so it will maintain its balance thoda steering ko better kar do na pehle jaisa kar do put the first generation x1 steering the pre facelift model i will buy this car every day again and again because that was so brilliant you know all these muscles i have all purely because of driving the first generation of the bmw x1 those were the days that is a lot of wheel spin and the pull from the motor puts a massive smile on the face because this engine bmw you do such great engines don't blunt them in the future which makes me give you a very fun fact you know what the x1 was priced at around rupees 20 lakhs for the first generation model for the corporate edition today it cost like 2.5x almost so the prices have gone through the roof why because bmw has a monopoly in the segment the q3 is gone the gla is gone and the new generation models will take some time to come in fact audi is giving us the pre facelift of the q2 as a stop gap measure till they are able to probably probably because of what i'm bouncing here <laughs> till the time they are able to locally produce those cars via the cqd route in india and the only competition for this car is the volvo xc40 so bmw and volvo they called each other and said you know what let's just go front wheel drive why let's save some money anyways no one's going to really care about going off roading in this car because the ground clearance is not enough and if somebody is really like bothered about going off roading they can save money opt for an endeavor or a fortuner all the all tourists or the gloster or in, okay gloster they did not mention because that at that time in the making this decision the gloster wasn't announced but they have done that that's why both of them are like front wheel drive for the win but the x1 also gets a diesel engine which the volvo does not get honestly i am not understanding why would you want to pay so much money for a car which just gives you the bad snobbery and doesn't offer you the size for the price which of course all these full size body on frame suvs do but most importantly the 3 series is so brilliant that you rather get that instead of the x1 and on that discovery it's time to end thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video soon bye bye oh my god i smashed the camera, the camera.